Okay, I have a download manager to review this time called Fox. I think I'm saying that right. It's a Mac download manager that comes in two versions. There is a standard version, which is free, that can be downloaded from their website or free from the Mac App Store. And there's a pro version, and the pro version is also available from the Mac App Store or their website. And the website one does have a couple more features, even though they're both the pro version. That is because of some restrictions Apple has on what they allow on the Mac App Store. So to comply with the Mac App Store's guidelines, they've had to take a few features out of the Mac uh, App Store version. But I'll go back into that a bit later. This is the interface. You have quick add here. Down here you can limit the upload and download speed. It does support torrent on the pro version, on the website version, but not the app store version. So you can limit the upload and download here. And it, that is also for downloading. So not just torrent. If you're downloading something, but you only want one of the files to use a little bit of the speed to allow the other files or whatever to get priority you can always limit here by default they're both upload and download is unlimited but you can click and have auto unlimited and various speeds here you then have various categories here such as all and that is what it's on by default you then have active any pause downloads so you can just see a list of the paused ones here then there is filter completed then we have this that comes out and you can use tags and you can create your own tags delete tags yeah you see just the application files that are in the list or just movies just music files pictures etc here and we can click anywhere outside to unselect these so let's just make the window smaller i don't tend to use tags myself here you have your main window this is the one we're on then you have a tab here which if we go here this is some history you can search here and this search various tor service, torrent services. Uh, let's just search for something I can think of. Now, you shouldn't, of course, there's a little disclaimer here, you shouldn't be searching for illegal files, but I can't think of any quick, free, genuine files. So let's just search for TV show. Now, if we search here, you put this in, hit the search button, it says search in, then it will try to find any torrents which has that. So you see here, there's like Doctor Who magazines come up, Doctor Who 2005, uh, Season 9, Episode 8, etc. So you can see it is working. This is a feature of the Pro version. Of, if you bought it directly from the website of the company who makes this, not the Mac App Store version. You then have a search feature here to search your list of files, although this is blank at the moment. But you see you downloaded 10 files, there'd be a list of them here. You'll see that a bit more again later. You can change your license type. Basically, that means do you have a standard pro license or do you have a family pack? You know, things like that. You can then check for updates from here. This is the latest version, version 4.2. Then we can go to preferences and we can set the number of active tasks. So do you want three downloads going all at once or just two files, 10 files, whatever? I tend to have it on two or three. What user agent do you want it to report as if you're having trouble with certain download services, not liking it because it's set to say Safari. You can always try Chrome, Windows, whatever. In fact, I'm actually going to try having it set on that for, for now. And if I have problems, I can always change it. You then have pretty much standard options here, including send anonymous usage statistics to the company that makes it. I just tend to leave it on. Some people don't like that sort of thing, but so you can turn it off. You can set up your proxy if you need to here. You can then even schedule in the pro version, not the free version, but in the pro version, you can schedule downloads. So you can have a list of downloads set up and say, OK, download only on Monday at 1800 or whatever or any day of the week, but at only at a certain time. Then when it finishes, do you want to schedule it to download, finish downloading, then shut down, restart, whatever? You can tick this, select, just shut down. Just put your computer to sleep when it finishes or quit the application, but leave it on and not on standby. There we go. I don't tend to schedule stuff. I just download stuff as I need it. We have speed control. So when you are downloading a torrent, a torrent or whatever, do you want to limit the speed to, say, around 100k, 5k? I'm just going to leave it on the defaults here for now. When these, app, when these apps are active, set the speed too. So this is when, say, you're in Safari 
you don't want your stuff to be too slowed down. You can change it here depending on what applications are open. So if you have a browser open, it will adjust this if these applications are open. If they're closed, then it won't use these settings. Tags, this is where you create and edit new tags. And say it's a movie, we can say, okay, once this movie's finished downloading, do we want to automatically add it to iTunes? And you can. Browsers, we can install an extension for Chrome, Safari, Firefox, and even Opera. And this is so you can add the downloads directly to the app. So say there's a link on the page of a download you want to get, you can right click and select download with Fox and the application will open with the download box with it sort of, uh, well, you'll see the download box when I add one later. It will add and then you hit add and get on with it. So you can do that directly from the browser instead of say, right clicking on a link, copy link address, then open the program yourself, then add it. You don't have to do that. You just right click on a link, say send to or download with Fox and it just does it. It's a bit quicker, a bit of a shortcut. You then have options for torrents and you know basically I just tend to leave this on default. I don't really use torrents much. You can randomize, you randomize your port and it says green, the port is free, that's good. And various settings here for connections etc. This will of course not be in the Mac App Store version. Search, so these are the torrent sites that it searches when you search for, say, like I did, Doctor Who. It will look at the, the list of sites. And if there is a site that's causing you trouble, because, say, it's given up, it keeps putting out these results you don't like or something for whatever reason, say it's this one, you can untick it and it won't use it. So you can untick services you don't like. So let's close that. File menu is pretty standard. You can create a torrent file. You can show trackers. You can edit a torrent file, delete task, delete all file, delete with files, show and finder. You can do a new task, start task, edit task. You can do standard edit, copy, paste stuff from here. You can look at different views such as compact view, full view. You can show bandwidth activity here which is quite handy in case you look, seem to be having speed trouble. You can go to full screen, standard window options here. As you can see, it says pro version, personal license, and help basically gets the help file and the ability to send feedback to the company. About box, personal license, 4.2. So now let's look at adding a file. Okay, so let's have a look at adding a file. Okay, so then we go to add a new task. This is a new task window. You have URL here. You have the URL you have copied. In this case, I copied the free version from the website. It says it's, you can add tags and it says it's picked up automatically as application. You can start immediately, manually, or schedule it. You can split it into threads. So it does support segmented downloading. By default, I think it's on three. It supports up to 10 threads. So what that means is, well, you can Google segmented downloading to find out more. But basically, instead of just looking at the file then gradually downloading it from start to finish it basically makes say like three connections five connections whatever to it and grabs chunks of it all at one time and it's a little faster and this program does support up to 10 threads you can rename it here you can add a description and if it's a website that you need to log into you can tick this box and put a new username and password and once you got these settings how you like it such as username and password you might always use or whatever or a certain number of threads like five or whatever you want you can set it as a default so you always have these settings next time you open this window you can add a torrent from here you can download from youtube here you can add a youtube link put tags immediately and you can select the quality such as is it a if it's a 1080p video do you just want to get it in 720 or 480 or whatever and you can add a description the only thing i don't like about this is some other programs that come with this sort of support such as wondershare video converter automate which isn't a downloader it's a com video converter but it has it has a plugin that you add to your browser such as fire uh, safari firefox chrome whatever and it allows you to get links and download not just youtube although it has it's fastest with YouTube. The downloading is really fast on YouTube, but it does also support Vimeo and Daily Motion. So I would like to see support for at least Vimeo and Daily Motion, if not 
any other video services. I can understand these plugins are not, unless it's a dedicated program, they're very unlikely to support very many video services. But I would like to see the other two big ones, Dailymotion and Vimeo, uh, added to this support. At the moment, this support is purely for YouTube videos. You can download YouTube videos from this pro version. Although, like I mentioned earlier, that doesn't uh, work with the Mac App Store version. The Mac App Store version does not support downloading from YouTube. Only the pro version from bought from their website directly supports this. So if you need YouTube downloading with this or want, want to have that ability built in and you want uh, torrent, torrent support built in, then you've got to get the pro version directly from the website not the mac app so which is a pity hopefully they can find work around to that because i do prefer to get my programs on the mac app store and have it all in one place easy to sort of just re-download etc if possible not a huge deal but i prefer it i if pro if the program had everything get had from the website in the mac app store version this is down more to apple restrictions not the company but if they could find a workaround that would be really good this is not the only program i should note that has restrictions like this there are some other programs such as video converters or whatever that if you get it from them it might be a little cut down such as the downloading from youtube a video converter may come with support for downloading from YouTube and Dailymotion from their website version, but not their Mac App Store version. So this isn't the only company that's run into this issue. So yeah, I would like to see Dailymotion and Vimeo support added. This is a quick look at Create a Torrent. You can select a source here or select a torrent using this box from your computer. You have trackers, web seeds, etc. here. You click this and add a tracker or web seed like that. You can adjust the file name here. You can save it to automatic or choose your folder on your computer. You can also select uh, the piece size, such as auto, or one megabyte, whatever. You can start a seed in or make it a private file. You can also add a description here and default like on the other dialog. Now, when we add a file, let's just see what it looks like. We do this. We've got the link here. Add a tag such as, uh, let's put Mac. And then hit a comma, downloader maybe, comma. We can then start it immediately. Let's do that. How many threads do we want? Let's try three, which is the default for the program. You can have up to 10. Let's give a file name. Let's leave it like that. That's fine. Don't need any uh, logging in. So let's hit add. And this is what it looks like when it's downloading. And there you go. Now, if you want, you can right click and edit the task you can move it up or down the list you can show the log you can show the file and finder delete the file or delete the file uh, delete it from the list that is or delete it from the list and the file associated with it from here we can also double click it and if we double click it it opens the file there we go if we want to remove it from the list we can do this and then that, that has removed it from the download list but it hasn't removed the file now let's have a quick look at the website to make sure we've talked about all the features and gone through the list. Okay, here's a website. I will put a link in the description. You just hit download to download the free version, the non-pro version, or like I say, you can get it from the Mac App Store. If you're getting the, the uh, free version, there's no reason not to get it from the Mac App Store that I know of. You can watch a video about it. It says it supports smart tagging, special features just for it. I'm not really going to read it all. You can see it yourself browser friendly magnet links torrent search only in the pro version in the pro version it has very very fast downloading up to 10 threads which i talked about earlier that is basically splitting the download into parts and it's what you might call segmented downloading you can always google it if you want to know more in the pro version you have lots of speed control over, over restricting some files Download, upload, etc. I've already showed you that. Scheduling of downloads only in the pro version. I've talked a bit about that. And iTunes integration, all music and video files downloaded with Fox can automatically go into your iTunes playlist with names and tags associated to the downloads. So it's basically sent to iTunes, which are what a lot of programs would call it. Um, and here we are, a comparison chart. Free version does not allow you to split your downloads into 10 threads or you cannot schedule your downloads in the free version. You cannot send to iTunes in the free version. 
you don't have speed control, you don't have torrents directly from the application, and you don't have YouTube downloading with a free version. However, torrent and YouTube downloading you do not have in the pro version if you get it from the Mac App Store either. High speed downloading both have, both can split into two threads. So the pro version can split into up to 10 threads. The free one will split it into two parts, but that's it. You have auto resuming the downloads in both versions and automatic catching of downloads in the browser if you set that up. And both versions have all the rest of this, such as spotlight integration, quick look integration, filtering, support for retina displays, various ways of adding more downloads, blah, blah, blah. Uh, custom, what customers say, download the free version here, buy the pro version for about $20, and that's directly from the site. At this time, I would recommend that you do get the pro version from their site, as it has a few extra bells and whistles. Do I recommend this program? Yes, I do because it's a very full feature downloader. Some other pay for ones and free ones, etc., don't have all these features, such as a lot of downloaders do not support threads and segmented downloading, and that is a really good feature to have. It helps speed up the download a little. So that is really, really good handy feature. This supports scheduling, not that I use that, but a lot of people might find that handy. It supports scheduling, segmented downloading, and if you need it and you get the pro version, from the website you have torrent searching and downloading you have youtube downloading although unfortunately no vimeo or daily motion support yet and it's just a whole host of features and it is optimized for retina displays so yes i do recommend you download it but what i'd say is i would normally recommend you download a demo or trial first there is no download a demo or trial but there's something even better you can get a free standard version from the website or the mac app store so I recommend you do that. You download the free version first, play around with it, test its speed out, although the, of course the pro version is faster, but download it, try out its interface, see if you like it. If you like it, then maybe consider buying the pro version. And if you buy the pro version at this time, just go to their website, which a link will be in the description, go there and get it from their website. So I hope this was helpful, being able to see the interface, see it in action, a little bit about it. And I hope it's helped that I've told you that the pro version is different from the mac app store and the website one because you might not be aware of that it, i don't think they make it obvious on their site maybe under help somewhere but it's not obvious so i hope that's been helpful knowing that and again i'd recommend you download the standard version first to give it a shot so that's it if you could like and comment on the video and if you could do me a huge favor and subscribe to my youtube channel as it only takes a few seconds it'll help me out a lot thanks